precisa People, welcome to this mini short video that I wanted to make uh, about Create React Tab 2 um, and like what does it have, uh, what's new and I'm gonna make a little bit of a demo of what it has new for you because it actually is a pretty uh, cool release. It's got many cool features that I want you to uh, know. So the first one is SAS and CSS modules. This was something that before we didn't have and uh, before we had to eject and modify Webpack to accept CSS models and accept SAS. Now, this is not the case anymore. We can do it out of the box without modifying Webpack, which is awesome. The next thing that it supports is a uh, fragment syntax. You will see that later, but basically fragments are these React components that let you render, um, that we use when we have to render two components that are not inside of a parent. And this was um, a difficulty before, because we had to type React fragment and import something. Now with Babel 7, there is a new syntax that is super, super sexy. Uh, Webpack 4, we don't give a shit, just whatever. Post CSS um, is something that transforms your CSS automatically. So you can use old uh, CSS, uh, new CSS stuff in older browsers, which is something super cool. This one, we don't care. Import SVG as a React component is kind of sexy. It's, it's kind of cool. Uh, John Plug and play is something that it's um, kind of experimental in Jarn where you don't have a node modules, but when you run your application, they will get downloaded automatically. Uh, if you're curious, this is how it works. And you should read here the, where is it? The implementation, I think. Um, I wouldn't use it yet because it's not something that I'm really interested about. Sometimes your node modules folder becomes very fucking big and then you will want to implement it, but not like anymore, I mean, for me. Um, and that's it. This thing, our Google's Workbox is sexy because Workbox is something to work with service workers and do offline stuff. Um, but yeah, we don't have time to do this on this video. Maybe we'll make a small course about Workbox because it's kinda, it's kinda sexy the way it catches stuff, all right? So let's go, let's get started. I'm gonna go to my iTerm and uh, I'm gonna do CD documents, npx create React app, uh, let's say CRV2. All right, if you wonder what, what MPX is, MPX is a very simple way of executing stuff like create React app. Usually what you would do is that you will download create React app and then you will execute it. Uh, when you do MPX, you don't download create React app you just execute it when you need it. CR V2, all right, and let's go this bitch. And here we go. So let me just put this bigger. All right, so first features first. Uh, let's see, let's do, bye-bye, yarn start. All right, All right. let's see, first things first. SAS. All right, so SAS, that's very simple to do. We just come here and we rename and we do SCSS like this. And now we have to import it over here and we're good to go. Now, this says that um, you need to install Node SAS. I maybe don't have Node SAS because it says here, you need to install Node SAS. So I'm gonna say yarn add Node SAS. And that will be enough. That should be enough. And uh, then after you do this, you can start using all the magic of SAS instead of doing, uh, for example, app, app header like this, you can just use the magic of SAS, which is this, or without this, sorry, like this. And it should still work, let's see. Yeah, start. There we go, it's still working, all right. Good shit. All right, so that is SAS. The other one that I like, that I actually like more than SAS, is CSS modules. CSS modules is cool because if we inspect this page, over here, if you look at this, you see class app, class header. Let me just make it bigger. Here, you will say it will says class app, class app header, and this is okay for some people, but for me, I really don't like to keep track of the tra of the of the class names. So that's what I use CSS modules. And CSS modules is something that um, you write the CSS normally, but when JavaScript and Webpack compiles your code, it will change the way the class name looks to try to make it as random as possible, which is something awesome. 
So if you want to include a CSS module, all you have to do is come here and rename this instead of app.css, app.module.css, CSS. You gotta import it from here. And now instead of importing the file, you have to import it as if it was a JavaScript file. So I'm gonna say uh, import styles from app module CSS. Let me, let me take this out over here, all right? And let's just do lowercase and everything, just because. Let me just modify this, because they should, they should look as a uh, JavaScript classes now. I think there's a way of doing this automatically. I'm just illiterate. All right. So you have this, and now it's a module, and you imported it as a style. So instead of doing class name app over here, what you will do will be class name styles. Whoa. Styles. And the name is dot app. All right. So I'm going to replace them all so you can see styles dot, oh, fuck, app header. All right. The same here. App logo and app link, I think. Styles, app link. All right, now if we, if we save this and we come back, it's still working as you can see, it's not ugly. And if we go inside, look at the class name. It's so weird, okay? Because that's called a CSS module. It will just, it's so weird, like look at that. It's just super, super random. There is, a, there is a, a clue of where it comes from, but the rest is just random, all right? And this is something that I really like more than um, SAS because I sometimes I really don't give a shit about the class names and I want my my um my my webpack or whatever to do it for me. All right, so that is the second thing. Remember, if you want to enable modules on Create React Tab Two, you need a that module file. Okay, if you don't change the name to that module, it's not going to take it as if it was a module. All right, okay. Next thing, React fragment syntax. That one is very easy. Before, instead of you doing this, react that fragment, right? React react that fragment was uh, built to do something like this. Okay, in this case, uh, I wanted to render div and I wanted to render span. If I don't have react fragment, I think there will be an error. Let's see. Yeah, it says that elements should be wrapped on a parent. All right, so people usually used to put spans here, but it's used as a span. If you put a React fragment over here, it wouldn't render in the in the browser. It will just be um, visible for the browser. All right, so this thing is awesome because instead of doing this, we can just do this, and it still works, and it's pretty as fuck. All right, this one is pretty as fuck. Is SVG as React components? In this case, we have the logo here, and we want to import it as a React component instead of putting it as if it was a uh, image, all right? So what you have to do is instead of importing it like this, you need to do this. And you need to say React component as logo with uppercase maybe. And this will let you replace everything to logo like this. Okay, and that it's there, I fucked the CSS, but it's working. That will work and still will be ISVG, all right? It's very important that you import it like this, okay? If you do this, it's not gonna work. If you do this, you need to specify that you want to import a React component. This is like a new rule, okay? Um, let me know if you're gonna use React create react app version 2 let me know which one is your favorite feature my favorite feature is modules and also um svg i really don't care about that SAS. but anyways let me know what do you think let me know if you want to see more content like this where i update you a little bit on what's happening on the javascript react react native world thank you for watching subscribe like comment eat kimchi take a shower i did bye bye